Welcome, everybody. We are back here at AWS reInvent here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I am here joined by my friend who's going to be talking about something so awesome, <laughs> so humbling, and I love. First of all, I'm a huge fan of Lambda Functions. Cool. Uh, I'm, I'm the pressure what? was on. I was starting to worry. Who needs that humbling? I got thrown up. Yeah, no, sure. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a huge, I'm a huge fan of Lambda Functions. They, cool. they are just small and mighty. And they, they do the thing. They do the thing and so well. Sometimes you make them do too many things and and you can you can hurt yourself. You can get in trouble. <laughs> but <laughs> they can now they can even do more things faster. So yeah. What can, what can you can't complain, hey. <laughs> now how are they doing more things faster? Well, so there are a whole bunch of things that Lambda has been working on this year because we have customers who are using Lambda at ridiculously high scale. Now, Lambda is uh, super helpful because it does a whole bunch of different things, and it can process data from a lot of different event sources and send, you know, do some number crunching, do some uh, analytics, sit behind an API, do a whole bunch of things, and then send data to a database, retrieve data from a database in anything. If you don't know, Lambda can run literally any, uh, any language runtime. We have some managed ones like Go and Python and uh, Java and .NET and all those kind of things, but we've got custom runtime, so you can literally run any language. If you want to run COBOL in a Lambda function, perfect. No yeah. problem. Uh, Julian, hold on one second. That's a great Lambda introduction. You didn't introduce yourself, though. Well, who are you, Julian? Yeah, I mean, you, you and I know each other. And Fair I, enough. I love Lambda functions maybe, maybe, because... Maybe he's a Lambda function himself. I am. A maybe. pile, a pile oh. of Lambda, a pile of lambda <laughs> functions in a trench coat. Would I've that be heard. a step well, function? Maybe we get all excited about the tech and, yeah, it's not about me, you <laughs> see. But anyway, I'm, well, I'm a developer advocate. I work within the serverless team at AWS. Uh, so yeah, that's a cool job. Uh, there's sort of two parts to it. One is to sort of show the world how serverless services work. And it's not just Lambda, it's awesome things like uh, step functions and event bridge and other kinds of things and APIs and all the sort of integrations with various kind of things. And then also we take a lot of uh, feedback back to the product managers. We're working with them and the engineers to make sure that literally all your feedback gets back to them and we build what you want. So as with all things AWS, if you want new things, more things change, let us know and we'll make it happen. <laughs> Obviously, can't pick favorites, uh, but one, yes, of, you can. one of my favorite <laughs> teams <laughs> at all of AWS. Okay, uh, can I write that down just look, in case I need it? Yeah. So it's, many it's friends recorded. over there. Yeah, it's look, on the internet now forever. They, they would be they would be uh, mad if I didn't say. Absolutely, yeah. James, <laughs> James would personally. No, absolutely come no. To my house, I think. I think so. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Well justified, though. <laughs> well, I was reminiscing. Okay. Uh, earlier, uh, Lambda functions. The very first talk I ever did at a reInvent oh, yeah. oh, cool. in 2017. Wow. I did a talk. I was working for a company called Box. I was talking about using Box and its Box's APIs in a Lambda function because, as you mentioned, you could do a lot of things. That's call out to a yeah. database, <laughs> calling out to an API, right? Yep. A third-party API is very easy from a yep. Lambda function. You yep. don't need a full server implementation to do that, right? Yep. But you mentioned Lambda functions have only gotten better since 2017. Yep. Yep. How are they getting better this year? Well, there are a lot of different things that are getting better this year, but the thing I'm going to chat about today is about Lambda scaling. And, and a lot of people are saying, what do you mean, Lambda scales ridiculously fast and high anyway? Like, yeah. why, why is that the <laughs> thing you're improving? And that does sound weird because you're like, well, there's still more work to do. So we've come out with a, a bunch of different things to help with Lambda scaling. Now, um, if we can bring up, what I'll do is I'll actually just, uh, if we can bring up the, yeah, the you slide. Got a slide. Uh, I don't know if, is it up? I can't there tell. Oh, there we go, cool. So. <clears throat> Lambda works by a thing called concurrency, and this is the number of parallel requests that your function is uh, serving at any given time. And Lambda works, it uh, runs in a little micro VM, and uh, that literally runs your function code and then does something else. So it's very secure because it's in a micro VM. Um, it is very fast to spin up uh, because it uses our firecracker um, stuff under the hood. Super awesome, like literally in millisecond startup. And so the whole point of Lambda is that it's about the scale out. So you know, if you think of HPC workloads, for example, uh, you need lots of different things running all at the same time. Lambda is perfect for that because it can scale out. Now, can you explain for those that might not be familiar with scaling, what the, what's the real like just quick Thanksgiving family dinner like? Hey, this is what scaling up and scaling out means. So scaling up is you have a box or some kind of thing, and you add more resources to it, like CPU or memory, so uh, this, the bounded thing of that box can do more. Scaling out is instead of having that box, adding resources to that box, you just make many more boxes that are going to do the same thing at the same time. And that's the concept of scaling out, which is separate to scaling up, if that makes sense. Awesome. Thank you for that explanation. Cool. Now I know what scaling means. <laughs> well, so if we go back to, the, uh, to Lambda, this is sort of how it works. So 
when a Lambda function is invoked and this uh, an event comes into the Lambda service, and this can be hitting an API, it can be uh, you know, reading something from a database, from DynamoDB, for example, polling from SQS, a whole bunch of different kind of things. And basically, your Lambda function invocation is then going to run a little bit of initialization code, and this is the code that you write outside your handler, and maybe you're going to set up, uh, you know, grab some secrets, some secrets manager, you're going to you know, download some files, yeah. do whatever that kind of thing. This uh, is to catch that, that nice, you know, if 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 it's uh, revving again, you know, you don't have to go out like yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so it's already there. Yeah. So the the init's going to happen, and then the invoke, and this is when your business logic is going to run. And then when that's running, the execution is uh, environment is busy, and it can't actually handle any additional requests. Mm. So if a new request comes in here, request two and request three comes in, well, it's going to spin up a new execution environment, and that in fact is the scaling out. So we've got execution environment two and three. We've now got three things happening at the same time. But then once, um, and then four and five are going to come in, same kind of thing. But then once execution environment one is uh, ready, uh, is finished, it's actually ready to do another invoke. So what the cool thing is, is because it's run the initialization process, we can just reuse that execution environment. You don't have to grab your secret again. You don't have to go and download your file again, for example. You can just run an invoke. The engine's already warm. Have you ever there heard, we go. like, you always have, you, you put some stuff outside the function handler. Yeah. And that's why. Right that's there. why. Yeah. Julian just explained yeah, well, that. Isn't that that's nice? A, yeah. I'm, I'm, nice I'm learning guy. so much about Lambda. <laughs> I've used oh. Lambda, but I just never really dove down into this it. That's why I That's, hang out with them. I, can, I can understand why. This is one of the kind of things. Lambda is so simple to use that people also jump into it and it works really well for them. Right. And then you know. often they don't even need to think about this kind of thing because it just does scale and handle exactly what you're going to do. That's incredible. Yeah. So if we do carry, oh, if we do carry on, um, the, so the invokes are going to happen like that. It's going to spin up new execution environments and reuse them if they're not needed. And so concurrency, you can count. You know, uh, concurrency in this example is always one because always there's one uh, execution environment. But as the many more execution environments come and go, you know, you've got three, five, four, six, five, and two, and that's just the count of parallel invokes of a lambda function. I'm getting scared. There's a lot of math getting involved. <laughs> no, we're going to keep it simple. Uh, the other thing people also get a bit of confused about is transactions per second, because a Lambda function, uh, you know, the, these invokes take one second, you've got 10 per second, that's 10. But if your Lambda functions then take half a second to run, well, they're going to run twice in that second, and you've now got requests per, uh, per second or transactions per second of 20. You've doubled up your, your transactions per second. Hmm. Another little bit of maths for you. Uh, reserved concurrency is a way you can basically throttle Lambda del deliberately. Yes. So you can, if you've got a downstream database or an API that can only handle 20 connections, or set a it to 20 and Or that's just wanting to just go all YOLO on development and let things run all weird. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Exhaust your resources. Well, then what you can do is you just set it to zero, and then it just turns <laughs> it off completely. That's like the kill switch. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, provision concurrency, I won't spend too much time on this, but this is just a way to run that uh, in a time in advance. Yeah. So if you've got a sale coming at 9 in the morning or a big TV show coming at you know, 8 p.m. and you want to have all that cold starts happening, you configure provision concurrency, and off it goes and just does that in it uh, really quickly. And provision concurrency can also save you a bit of money. Uh, in sort of US East 1, uh, oh. um, ab above about 60%, it's actually going to be a little bit cheaper. And what you can actually do is you can programmatically do this and analyze your execution patterns, and then start with a provision concurrency of a set amount, and then use application auto-scaling to dial that up and dial that down. So that's a, a, a way that you can sort of pre-provision Lambda to get it sort of ready for those big scale invokes when you need them. Super helpful. And yeah, please don't pay for provision concurrency that you don't <laughs> use. We don't want you to waste any more extra money than you need, so there's a little metric to, to make sure that you're doing kind of stuff. So this is what we, the interesting thing we're going to be talking about. Okay, Not that the rest wasn't interesting. So there are two quotas to do it. One's the account concurrency. That's a fixed amount for all the Lambda functions that can run in your account. Right. And this is the new scale concurrency quota. Now, previously, hmm. Lambda could scale in an account by 3,000 of those parallel execution environments. So that's like 3,000 concurrent things. That's really big and then an additional 500 each minute. And that would then sort of slowly ramp up. And that would be our whole account. You've got 10 Lambda functions, you've got 1,000 Lambda functions in that account, it's all going to share that limit. So we've basically broken through that ceiling and we've changed it all a bit, and we've said what's going to happen is we're going to now scale up Lambda for 1,000 execution environments every 10 seconds, and that's every function, it's no longer shared. Oh, wow, per function. Per wow. function, so wow. that's the big kind wow. of thing. So some people are already saying, well, hang on, you've gone from 3,000 down to 1,000. That's a retrograde step. 
technically that could be if you only had one function yeah, in your account. Yeah, you're just using one function, which and, yeah, most people aren't. Most people aren't. So literally 99.9% of people, this will be a net benefit. Um, but uh, if you are that sort of 0.1%, you know, our Lambda team is looking and crunching the analytics to be able to help you out with that so you won't have any um, bad disruptive behavior with us. Because obviously we want scaling to work really well. Well, I'll tell you, um, I, so I'm on the game day team. Yep. And uh, game day is basically a giant serverless application. Yep. And we do have multiple functions. And, and when we have a very large event, we'll often hit that concurrency yep. limit because yep. we got so many people yep. playing. That's normal, yeah. And uh, this is amazing. Just yep. per function, yep. this changes no, a lot exactly. for us. I mean, especially for, you know, a lot of people have lots of microservices and lots of different things. And you had to sort of have this awkward dance yeah. where you had to uh, coordinate them all. So if you look at it in the graph thing, and I am going to show this live. So, you oh. know, previous scaling, if you wanted to get up to 10,000 concurrent requests, that would take 12 minutes to get there. Now, you know, that's 10,000 requests at the same time. That's still a heck of a lot of traffic that's going to your website. You know, most websites out there, you know, internal microservices, you know, you're lucky if they're hitting even 300 or something. But we've got big customers doing some big cool stuff, so it would take 12 minutes. Look at that comparison now. It's literally going to from 1,000 every 10 seconds, meaning that same scaling instead of 12 minutes is 90 seconds. Wow. This is how you can get your dog show videos out to the public faster. Mm. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For so sure. I am going to show how this works. And I've got actually another demo, which I can also kick off in the background, Ooh. because SQS, we've also amended the scaling with that. So I'm going to just um, turn that on. I've got an SQS queue that we're going to drain really quickly. It's going to take a few minutes, so we'll do that in the background. I mean, that's another thing, too, over the years, uh, the, the amount of uh, Lambda function triggers yeah. is oh, exponential. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's... I actually used to know the number and now I've forgotten. So yeah. <laughs> it's it, just... Every it year. It integrates with so many things. Something but. else can now invoke a Lambda yeah. function. It's, yeah. it's amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to kill an API. Or I'm going to kill two different APIs. So I've got one Lambda function over here. Uh, what am I doing? You're getting some love from chat, too, Julian. Am I getting some love from chat? Yeah, Excellent. Julian is awesome. He can make the most technical topics so accessible. Well, that's very, uh, that's very kind of you. So uh, US West 1, I've got another one over here. Just got to find the right there, US East 1. So basically, this little, oh, this is a cool utility. It's called yeah. Hey. I, uh, yeah, yeah. I hadn't heard Load of it until recently. I've, right? I've used some other ones. I'm not going to name them. And they are really good, but this is so simple. So basically, I, I'm hitting 10,000 requests every second against an HTTP API endpoint. I mean, that's pretty crazy. And normally, these demos go all haywire because you actually can't generate that much traffic from the client because the client just sort of goes mad and is not able to actually do that. So, so what I've got is I've now should hopefully have a function over here. Uh, when that wakes up, or two functions, we'll just get the browser to refresh. <coughs> and what I've got is I've got a concurrency metric, which is in orange on this one, which is hopefully going to show uh, the old version of Lambda scaling up. Now, I'm not seeing anything yet. So is this, um, let me just see, uh, maybe I'm not, no, I'm doing, let's look at the other one. This is uh, where the demo. It's because we didn't do our demo dance. Oh, we have a, a graph I knew we forgot well. something. Yeah. So there already, we've got 2,500 uh, concurrent invokes. So that's already um, done something rather quickly. So <coughs> you know, we're going to see these kind of things in a few seconds coming up. Um, haven't seen anyone on the old one. Anyway, I've got a, should have a comparison, which will be coming up soon over here, which has got the old one and the new one. But while that's happening in the background, um, there are some other scaling things that we've been doing as well. Um, and one of them is with SQS. So this is a super powerful and super, super useful way that you can process Lambda function, process stuff off a queue with a Lambda function. Very common, you're doing any asynchronous architectures, you just dump stuff in a queue and then get Lambda to process it. Yes. You can control that uh, concurrency, the scaling, because that's going to be super helpful. So lots of people do it, they just store like a huge bunch of stuff in, in SQS that could be for uh, batch processing, can literally be for anything. And it's, SQS is one of our weirdest services because it has, no, it has very little scaling limits. You can literally throw as much in SQS as possible and it just deals with it. And it's one of the first services, services at AWS. Right. And it's serverless as well. So. Is it backed by Lambda? Um, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> that would be the circular dependency of awesomeness. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, just, just for nothing else, the fact that I don't have to pull uh, well, that's it. It's my preferred method. Yeah, so, in right? fact, I will show you because this also, these are the Lambda event source mappings. And we've got uh, Kinesis, DynamoDB Streams, SQS, uh, Kafka, all these kind of things. Yeah. And Lambda runs a polar on your behalf. 
and that polo is free. You don't pay for that polo. So if you're used to running an EC2 instance or something on premises or even a container to do polling and you've got to track offsets and all these different kind it's of things. It's way work. more complicated than people realize if you, they've never built it before. Exactly, right? it's work. And so Lambda just does that for you for free. And you can also optionally filter things. So you can look at a, a you know, CDC from DynamoDB and only look at customer update events, for example. Or you can look at uh, you know, something from Kinesis and pick various things from a particular partition. And so that filtering means you don't have to invoke your Lambda function with stuff you don't need. Super useful. Yeah. So yeah. less invokes. We just saw, uh, speaking of Apache Kafka, we just played the Confluent game day. Oh, uh, cool. And it works. Yeah. The Lambda trigger works with Confluent as well. Absolutely, yeah. Because running built Apache in. Kafka. Yeah, so. just built in. No, it works super well. And so uh, that pulling data from SQS is awesome. And so I have an SQS queue over here, which I used something to punt sort of 200,000 messages in it. <laughs> and um, as you do. No big deal. <laughs> it's a Monday. It's yeah. Vegas. I mean, right. We go big, go big or go home. <laughs> and hopefully we're going to have some. So here we go. So we can basically see here that I have this SQS queue, which had two, oh, exactly 200,000. Wow. I was so annoyed the other day I tried this demo out, and it was 200,000 and one. And one. And I was like, seriously, <laughs> do me a favor. Exactly, <laughs> do me a favor. So yeah, basically, you can see now how this Lambda function concur um, concurrency just ramped up really quickly. And uh, it's holding over there. My mouse is not holding, yeah. And f so before, uh, SQS used to be 60 invokes a second that could ramp up with, and now it's five times that, so that's 300 invokes a second. Just you, five, you, so, so you can see <laughs> that Lambda function has scaled up to 1,000 concurrent invokes in, one, in three minutes, and that would have taken, it would have, it's basically five times faster. So drain your SQ, uh, SQS um, queues much more quicker, that'd be good. Now I'm getting slightly perturbed because our metrics are, there's our Lambda function, we've got some of a slightly wonky line over there. Um, but basically, that has now what we went. Yeah, there we go. You so three minutes. 10, three minutes up to 10,000 concurrent uh, invokes. So that would have taken, what did I say before? It was 20 minutes, I think. Yeah. So yeah, 90 seconds. We've got some sort of dip over here. Who knows? Is a gremlin stealing some concurrency? <laughs> and if we look at the previous one, we can see here, in the same amount of time, we're now only at 5,000. So that's ramping up in the old way of doing it at right. 5,000. This new way, we've already got to 10,000 know, way before then. That's incredible. Yeah. And the other one is Kafka. You talked about Kafka yes. as well. We've yes. also got Kafka scaling improvements which have happened. So this is SQS, the previous scaling to compare the graph. That's much, uh, much quicker as well. You can literally just see, look, there's going before. And afterwards, SQS queue drained, Lambda concurrency going up super quickly. <laughs> and um, the, the Kafka scale is scaling same, the same as well. Uh, you can see the graph over here. That concurrency just shoots up really quick, quickly with Kafka. Kafka is all about you know, huge amounts of processing. Yes. and um, Previously, we had you know, smaller amounts of consumers, and I think literally within three minutes, we will get the maximum amount of consumers, and that will be the maximum number of partitions you have in your Kafka cluster. Kafka cluster. There's no way to say that properly. Uh, I I'm think it's impossible. I'm glad it didn't come out as a rude word. It could have. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you always sort of worry going, what did I say? Yeah, so that's it. The lambda scaling. The, so the first lambda scaling I spoke about with uh, you know, the, up to the 10,000, right. that's for synchronous invokes. Um, and that's rolling out slowly at the moment. So if you don't see it, don't panic. That will be coming. It's rolling out uh, the next week. It's such a big change to Lambda that we are sort of being very cautious with yes. rolling it out to certain accounts and get that all going out. But yeah, it should be just. And again, as with Lambda, it's just going to happen. You're not yeah, going to. I was going to say, yeah. anything I was say, I have to you do? don't need you don't, to make modifications. You don't, I doubted you it. You don't yeah. config anything or change anything. So it's actually quite weird when you, when you hear from the engineers and they get these support calls and they go, yeah, we, had a, we have a bit of a problem. Uh, before, Lambda used to take long, long to scale, and now it's really fast. We think there's a problem. <laughs> problem. <laughs> exactly. That it's seems a, like the kind of feature. problem I want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Those are serverless problems for you. There yeah. you go. We solve them for you. So, Julian, uh, we got about 30 seconds left. Uh, can people, if they're here, can they find you at Serverless Espresso? <laughs> Yeah, they certainly can do. There's Serverless Espresso. There's uh, the whole uh, AWS Modern Apps booth as well. Um, I'm doing a presentation on with Chris Munns on best practices for serverless developers. That's on Thursday Not in Munns. Venetian. How did you How did you draw the short straw to get oh, paired with Chris Munns? Not at all. I got the I got the long straw if there's such a thing. So okay, yeah, so right. that'll be awesome. And there's walk up capacity. It's a big venue, so I'd love to see you. And yeah, I'll be around the expo. Yeah, hit me up on Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever. I'd love to chat and say hi. It's always wonderful to have you on the show, Julie. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I appreciate yeah, it. I learned a lot. Yes. I'm, I'm just... I'm a lot of very fast talking because Lambda's <laughs> fast. <laughs> yes. I see what you did there. All right. We will be back with more live from reInvent. Stick around.